After a year of lockdowns and perhaps less consistent training, it's common for people to experience some loss of fitness progress. Fortunately, rebuilding muscle after a training break is not a complex process. If you get back into training with a solid plan, you will experience faster than usual progress and eventually get better gains than even before the lockdowns happened. So in today's video, I will discuss three science-based tips that will help you regain your fitness if you had to take a step back recently. We also recently reached 10,000 subscribers on this channel and just want to say a quick thank you. Your support to the channel means a lot to me. And let's dive straight into the video by discussing why you can regain muscle quickly after a training break. You may have heard of the term muscle memory. Even though your muscles technically don't have a memory, muscle memory refers to the ability to regain muscle quickly after a training break. A leading theory about muscle memory is that you can regain muscle quickly because you retain the nuclei you acquire as a result of lifting weights, even when you take a long training break. Nuclei are essentially the control centers of your muscle fibers. Acquiring more nuclei allows for more muscle growth to occur. One study shows the nuclei you gain after training can stay present for up to 15 years. So even if you lost some muscle in the past months, your training experience helps you regain this muscle more quickly. Not to mention that if you had some activity throughout the week, you may not have lost a lot of muscle in the first place. In a study published earlier this year, the researchers found that most people can maintain muscle if they train at least once or twice per week. So if you did a home workout or two every once in a while, you're in a good position to get back on track with your regular workouts. I hope this sets the tone for the rest of this video, which is that even if you had very inconsistent training months, you might be in a better position than you think to regain your progress. Having said that, let's dive into the first tip that I'd like to give you, which is having an introductory training cycle. The tempting thing to do when you get back into training is jumping right back to the weights you used to lift and challenging yourself very hard. But the day after this, you probably won't have a good time. The muscle soreness you experience after training will be so great that it will prevent you from being consistent in your workouts. And if it's one thing you want in your first week back into training, it's establishing a routine. That's why I suggest you have an introductory training cycle when you go back to the gym. An intro cycle essentially refers to a lower volume training period. Instead of jumping to the training volume you did before your training break, reduce your training volume to roughly 75%. This will help keep muscle soreness within a reasonable level and will help you train more consistently in that week. So if you typically do 16 sets per week of chest training, perform around 12 sets per week in the first one to two weeks. The longer your training break has been, the longer your intro cycle should last. If you missed only one month of training, then one week of an intro cycle is sufficient. But if you missed two or more months of training, this is when I would suggest a two week intro cycle. If I take myself as an example, I currently train four times per week with an upper low routine. In an intro cycle, I would shift to three times full body training, which would help me bring the volume down to 75%. After one or two weeks, I would transition back to an upper lower split. The next tip is about refocusing on progressive overload. And this one can be tricky because if you haven't done certain exercises for more than a month, it is possible that your strength is now considerably lower as you do it for the first time again. So for your first session back in the gym, I suggest you experiment with how much weight you can lift during your warm-up sets. For every month that you have not practiced a certain exercise, I suggest that you decrease the weight by 10% on your first time back, with a minimum of using 70% of your normal working weight. So if you haven't done the bench press for a month and can bench 100 kilograms, get back to doing 90 kilograms. But if you have missed three or more months, practice with 70 kilograms first. This might sound like you need to drop the weight a lot on your first training session back, but the nice thing is that as you get back into practicing something like a bench press consistently, your neurological adaptations and form improve quickly. So after a couple of weeks, you will probably find that your bench press efficiency is improved tremendously and this will help you lift more weight again. Also, in this rebuilding phase, I suggest that you structure your progressive overload in a double progression model. Let's take the overhead press as an example. Say you're able to shoulder press 40 kilograms for about 7 reps currently and we train the shoulder press in a 6 to 8 rep range. Before we increase the load on the overhead press, we aim to increase your repetitions to 8. So you first reach the upper end of your rep range and then you increase the load that you're lifting. You can use this double progression model on all compound exercises to rebuild your strength in this regaining phase. The third tip is about nutrition, because even though we're speaking about how you can get back on track with consistent training, your nutrition greatly impacts how much you get out of your training sessions. The two main variables we want to look into are calorie intake and protein intake. When the goal is rebuilding muscle, then ideally you wouldn't restrict your calories and you would give your body enough energy to utilize towards proper training and recovery. Based on the research, we know that the calorie surplus of around 10% helps with optimizing muscle growth. 
but I can imagine that some people also gained some unwanted weight throughout the training break due to their lower activity. If this is the case and you also would like to lose fat, it is possible for you to aim for a body recomposition phase. As I have discussed in a previous video, there are many studies showing that you can gain muscle while losing fat. The muscle growth progress is slower because your body doesn't have enough energy to really optimize muscle growth, but the progress is still good. So if you have the goal of both leaning down and rebuilding muscle, then achieving body recomposition after a training break is not a bad idea. Your muscle memory benefits will help you rebuild muscle even while you are in a calorie deficit, but I would make sure that you don't restrict your calories too much by having say a 20% calorie deficit that you maintain, so that your body still has enough energy to utilize towards building muscle. So if you maintain your weight at around 2500 calories, don't decrease calories below 2000 per day. It's also key that throughout this process you have your protein intake in check. Of all three macronutrients, protein matters the most. The research is simple, high protein diets promote muscle growth. Based on the current literature, at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight is a good goal. Also, maintaining a good balance of carbs and fats in your diet is good because if your carbohydrates for instance fall too low, then you probably won't be able to optimize your training performance. This helps explain why research shows ketogenic diets tend to be less effective for muscle growth. I would maintain a moderate carbs and fat intake, try not to overly restrict either one of them. So if we summarize this video, we come to some simple conclusions. You can regain muscle and strength quickly due to muscle memory benefits. To prevent excessive soreness in your first week of training, have a 1-2 to two week intro cycle. Refocus on progressive overload by using the double progression model discussed. And lastly, optimize nutrition for muscle growth by eating enough protein, calories and having balanced carbs and fats. And that was all for today's video. I hope this gives you a better idea of how you can structure a rebuilding phase if you're coming from a training break. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.